every puppy needs a collar. I prefer a buckle collar like this one because it's easy to get off and on. You should check the fit of your collar frequently. It should fit in such a way that it can't slip over your puppy's head, but loose enough so that you can fit two fingers underneath. Take the collar off when your puppy's unsupervised, especially if he goes in the crate. Now you're probably going to see something like this, the choke chain. You're going to want to avoid it. It's outdated and unnecessary for a puppy of this age, or any dog for that matter. So stick with a buckle collar. You're definitely going to need a leash for your puppy. There are a lot of options out there, but I prefer a six foot leather leash like this one. It softens in your hand over time and just feels really comfortable. Now, as far as the clasp goes, there's a couple different options, but this has been the easiest for me, the type that snaps down like this, as opposed to the type that pushes in. You might be tempted to buy one of those retractable leashes. I really don't recommend it. What typically happens is the puppy ends up 15 feet in front of you and you're left behind being dragged along. A six foot leather leash like this one keeps your puppy safe and close. It's a lot of fun buying toys for your puppy. Stuffed toys like these are great as long as you supervise play. If you notice that your puppy's starting to rip them up, throw them out. Balls go hand in hand with puppies. You wanna make sure though that you get the appropriately sized ball for your puppy. A ball of this size would be perfect for Sue. A ball of this size would not be because it presents a choking hazard. And the tug toy. Once considered the forbidden game of the puppy world, it's actually really quite great if you play with real toys and not with things like your slippers or your socks. As long as you're playing tug with a real tug toy with rules, it's a great game and a great way to wear out your puppy. There are a lot of cute options for bowls, but I like bowls that can't crack or chip. They're also really easy to clean. Let's talk about chews. This is not a chew toy. Throwing puppies need resistance for those jaws and teeth. Corn starch bones like this one, perfect. Keep in mind though, this isn't a meal replacement. You'll notice that Sable's quite busy with this hollow activity toy. You can stuff them with cheese or fruit or vegetables. And as you can see, it's a great way for her to exercise her jaws. I also like hollow marrow bones like this one. They're extra good because you can stuff them with cheese or peanut butter and keep your puppy busy for hours. The macho stick or the bully stick is another great chew for dogs. Keep in mind though, any chew runs the risk of splintering, cracking, or breaking off. So make sure that you watch your dog when he's chewing. Take away any bones that look damaged. Speaking of damage, you're gonna to want to avoid rawhide. Rawhide presents a choking hazard because large pieces can break off and become lodged. It's up to you to choose the right chew. Don't want your puppy to have the run of the house? Use a baby gate. A baby gate is a great way to keep your puppy in one room. Keep in mind though, certain breeds are excellent climbers like Jack Russell Terriers. You wanna make sure that your puppy can't scale the gate. If you happen to have a larger than normal opening like this one, don't despair. You can always use a flat cardboard box with a chair propped up behind it and you're good to go.